All right, for our last um, conference of the day, we have Stephanie Dolson, also of the New York Liberty. We'll go ahead and get started um, and start with Scott. Go ahead, Scott. Yes. Uh, what is different between preparing for this team as opposed to the one from Tokyo last year with the three by three? Um, I mean, a lot. It's obviously different games in a way. Um, but uh, for the most part, you know, you're just playing basketball. So um, trying to approach it in the same aspect of, you know, I've done five and five on five for a while now. Um, so you know, kind of the same way you approach basketball in general, just going, doing what you're good at um, and just playing hard. All right, um, next we'll go on to Rafiq. This is Rafiq with nothing but that sports talk. How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? You doing fine? I just want to ask you like, looking back at this New York Liberty season, how has that helped help you get ready for this upcoming America games for Team USA basketball? Um, I'd say just the level of competition and how hard people compete in the W uh, in general prepares us pretty well for international play. Um, it's a lot more physical. Um, you know, you're going to play faster, uh, but in the W, like we play hard all the time. So um, it just prepares us well for, for that. And how good is it to have three other, uh, other New York Liberty players, AKA your teammates to practice with you in preparing to make the team? Um, yeah, I mean, it helps having the familiar familiarity um, of them having three of three other people here uh, from New York, you know, we've been able to play a lot together, with the exception of Benajah. Um, so we're getting to play with her a little bit more here, uh, which has been fun and um, just spending more time off the court and stuff is always good for um, just chemistry. Appreciate the insight. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, Nate. Hi, Steffi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, I asked Benaj this, uh, but I'm gonna ask you, so you've got four rookies invited to Team USA. What are some of the things that you can pass on to them as a vet and just being in this, being part of, of a special team like this? Yeah, I think it's just representing USA basketball. Um, uh, every time we come here, it's a privilege, it's an honor uh, to wear this jersey and, I think they already have it though. You know, it's not much to teach. Um, you know, you invite people here for these camps that, that know what it takes to, to play for USA. Um, so they've already been amazing. Um, I've seen a lot of great things from them in just one day of practice. So really excited for the future. Appreciate you. Thank you, Steph. Thank you. Jackie. Hey, Steph. Good to see you. Um, so the, the first thing I want to ask is uh so Maureen Johannes uh, was interviewed by FIBA.com and she talked about how she felt like playing with all of you this year was, or on the Liberty rather, um, was a breath of fresh air after what she said was a complicated season in, in France. What do you think that says about you all and Sandy and her coaching staff, you know, amid also the highs and lows of the season that you all dealt with this year? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I think, you know, every season comes with its ups and downs. I mean, every team, no matter, you could be the best in the league, the worst in the league, like you're going to have good and bad days. Um, so I think for someone like Marine and honestly, all of us, whenever we play, whether it's overseas in the W, um, USA basketball, it's always nice to have different people around you, uh, different coaches, different, just an aura, you know, just, it's, it's nice to have that kind of fresh um, approach to basketball. And I'm sure for Marine, you know, we know how long overseas seasons are. So I'm sure it was nice for her to come, not to mention she got to play with me. So obviously she was going to have fun. <laughs> just Don't tell her I said that. I, I won't. Um, I, I appreciate that. Uh, so also, I, I want to know, how did the rest of the New York clan look today? And how do you compare to what you all did in February to what's going on here now? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think everyone looks good. Um, I think we're just trying to, with USA basketball, it's always about finding your place uh, within all of these amazing players. So, you know, people are gonna have good days, bad days. There's gonna be days where you don't do much. I personally probably didn't do much today, but for me as an older player, I'm just trying to move the ball, make sure people are flowing um, and that we're building that chemistry on the court because, you know, we don't have a lot of time before games. So in general, I think it was a really great camp, uh, a really great day of camp. Um, but yeah, it was nice to see all the New York girls do well. And last one for me, um, you know, when we get to this time of the year, the WNBA season and the playoffs, they're, they're wrapping up. Um, I, I'm curious as to what you believe the state of pro women's basketball in the U.S. is right now and, and what you think is going to be top of mind as we move past the 2022 calendar year. And sort of what I mean by that is potential expansion coming along and, and just how pro women's basketball moves forward. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I think just the the level of competition of these playoffs, you see Stewie and Asia going at it. Um, it's just incredible to watch. So I think, and the fact that Asia is especially so young, um, I think they're attracting a lot of fans, a lot of new people watching um, the W and it just makes that expansion easier, you know, more fans in other cities, uh, more exposure. And I do think, you know, in general, the league is going up and, you know, more viewership um, with amazing players like Candice and Sue and Sylvia, um, you know, on their way out uh, with having the young talent of Asia and Stewie and um, people like Ryan Howard getting rookie of the year. Like there's just incredible talent um, coming through, which is great for, for fans. And last one, and I'm sorry about this. Um, on the topic of expansion, what are a couple of places that you believe a W or where a WNBA team could thrive and why? Um, maybe the, is it Toronto is an option, right? Uh, Canada. I don't know what city it was in Canada. Um, I think they have a great national team. Um, you know, I know a few players like Kia nurse, um, and they have great fans. So I think that would be an amazing place for a team. Um, I don't know. I'd love another team out in California. Obviously that would always be great. Uh, Philadelphia. I think those fans for the Sixers are amazing. So I would hope with, um, kind of a partnership hopefully happening there would be incredible for a team. Um, and I think they'd also get a lot of great fans to come to the games. Thank you, Steph. Appreciate it. You got two more. Hayden. Go ahead, hey. Oh. hey, Stephanie. Hayden Silly with the next. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, I want to ask you about your former teammate, Diamond DeShields. It's her first time here at, um, at training camp. Uh, I just want to ask just from today, what have you seen from her game that has improved over, you know, over the course of her career? Um, probably her defense. Uh, I, I mean, she's one of those people who she's going to score at will uh, on offense. She's so athletic. She's quick. Um, but even today in camp, she got a few steals, a few deflections, um, you know, closing out on someone and not letting them beat her. I think, enough I don't think enough players take pride in that defense and I think for her the fact that she's matured um and and just gotten better at defense and, and cares you know it's it's an incredible thing to see from someone like that knowing how talented she is on offense perfect and then another question for me I know during her recovery um from that tumor that she had in her spine I know you were on the team and it was almost like you were there sort of you know up close and in person for her recovery process, just what was that like from her perspective and what does it sort of say about her character when it comes to the resiliency? Uh, what do you mean it was from her perspective or, like or from, having from, teammates or, there? or from, sorry, from, from your perspective? Oh, like from my perspective. Oh yeah. Um, no, I mean, it was hard, uh, you know, having, I wasn't there physically. I'd heard, you know, when it all happened, she had reached out to all of us um, explaining what was about to happen. But then to see her recovery in the training camps and then going to the bubble, um, you know, it was scary, but it was also incredible to see someone like that just fight through it 
um, to continue to play us not really knowing the extent of, you know, how much pain she was in or, or what she was really going through, because obviously none of us have been through something like that. So to just see the way she carried herself and, um, you know, tried to not let us, I guess, see, you know, her vulnerability um, is just really impressive. And um, like you said, just shows that character of, of, of her. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks. This one, um, you kind of touched on this, I think, but Stacey is asking about some of the differences in play, um, FIBA versus WNBA or um, even your international experience versus playing in, in FIBA national team competition. Mm -hmm. um, do I look at the camera? Sure, yeah. Oh, okay. uh, I mean, it's just physical. I, I think that's the biggest thing. The refs don't call as many fouls. To me, it's, it's a better um, comparison to like playoff basketball compared to regular season. Um, playoff basketball is super physical refs are letting us play. Um, and I think that's what FIBA is. It's super quick, a lot more versatile players. Um, Got to be able to do different things, guard different types of people. Um, but I mean, the W's like that too. So I think they're fairly similar. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Steph. Appreciate it. We'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Bye guys.